welcome to Real Gardens from the Royal Horticultural Society's Chelsea Flower Show, perhaps the greatest flower show on this planet. Five of our Real Gardeners will be coming to Chelsea later in the programme. But first, we're going to find out what they're up to in their own gardens at home. Anne-Marie is helping Alison and Mike to add a splash of colour to their Stockport garden. Carol is bringing a touch of glamour to Adrian and Debbie's Devon patio. <laughs> and I'm in Guernsey with Liz Colonnette, making her start on her new Mediterranean terrace. Debbie and Adrian Taylor love entertaining their friends out on the deck of their Devon bungalow with its wonderful views over Dartmoor. They've done a lot in the garden this year, but Debbie still feels it lacks what she calls a wow factor. Well, ultimately, I'd like to be able to um, show my garden off to the public, <laughs> like, an, like National Trust or one of these open gardens. I'd love to be able to do that. Actually, my mother thinks that we've got delusions of grandeur, or I've, got, got, delu delusions I've grandeur. got delusions of grandeur. <laughs> Debbie wants a swimming pool. I do not want a swimming pool. I don't want a swimming you did, pool. You did. You said, I want one of those. So well, I'm going to yeah. have to get the shovel out later. Debbie and Adrian have already started decking out their house with hanging baskets. Last year, they found that they were watering them three times a day. We're so they're hoping that Carol Klein will have some ideas on how to make their baskets more exciting and yet easier to look after. Petunias. Yes. Yeah. And jumpers. Petunias and jumpers. <laughs> yeah. They are too. <laughs> well, uh, what do you reckon? Well, um, very nice. I'm glad they matched the colour of the flowers. Yeah. And what about this? Talking of clothes, this Pierre is wonderful. Oh, I'll try that on for size. What yeah, can reckon? I borrow this for a hat for Chelsea? What do you think? Okay. I mean, just for a seat sheet. <laughs> this area here, Carol, is by the kitchen door. Yeah. And we've got a couple of hanging points. I thought it might be nice to put some hanging baskets full of herbs. Sort of culinary hanging baskets. Yeah, mm. I thought that would be a, a, a nice idea. Well, actually, yeah. it was my idea, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, before you claim responsibility for it, it's not necessarily a good idea to put all ah. your herbs together because not all herbs like the same condition, so well. it doesn't always really work out well. Right. Very good idea, was it, Des? Well, you might get a lot more impact if you just sort of confine each basket to one or two herbs and do a you know, mixture of those. They can be a bit dull too. Have you got anything really bright? Um, we've got some marigolds that we're well, going to bed out. for bedding. Didn't intend to use them for hanging baskets. We're going to put them out in the, no, the main bed. No, but we can use them for the hanging baskets. Two against one, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> End the discussion. Ooh, what a lovely selection. Oh, Debbie set me loose down the garden centre. You do like a bit of shopping, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I can't resist it. And this parsley we've grown from seed. How about combining that with these and making um, something quite different? Instead of just making them in single baskets, why don't you do two and join them together, sort of one wow, on top of the other? Wow, that sounds novel. Sounds a good idea. Yeah, Ooh. might not work, but we could Say. Have, give it a go. We could have a try. As an alternative to moss, we're using a substitute made from jute and sisal with a plastic liner to help retain moisture. To help cut down on the frequent watering, we're going to add some water retaining crystals to our compost, but we need to soak them for an hour. We won't put any compost in until we've arranged quite a few of these plants. They might, might need a bit of jiggery pokery. We're cutting some holes in the liner before we start planting. You're going to the, do the top to our bottom, two matching halves? Yep. Are you struggling, Adrian? No, I'm not. No, I'm fine. Thank you very much for asking. But uh, everything's just peachy over here. <laughs> After much pulling and pushing, the basket's now finished and it's time to mix water crystals and compost. Ooh, oh, I say. Oh, that's lovely. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe what's happened to it. And Look you can see how much water it's actually going to retain, can't you? That's going to be... Quite apart from its therapeutic uses. <laughs> This compost is made up of John Innes, peat, grit and a slow-release feed. We mix two parts of this to one part of the water-retaining crystals to make a sort of jellied earth. And that will keep on retaining the water all season long. Once we fill the two baskets, we're fixing in a piece of cardboard to hold in the compost before joining the two halves together. Put your hands flat. 
Oh, and it's quickly. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Woo! OK, now I just need to get my hand out. <laughs> no, can't we keep your hand in there, does yeah, it? Yeah, I'll take, keep my take hand, hand out. In. Take your hand out, darling. Yeah, I just said take my hand out. With the two halves wired together, our herbal globe can hang securely by the kitchen door. After a few weeks, the plants will merge together. But somehow, I don't think we'll find anything quite like it at Chelsea. In the garden of their new home in Stockport, Mike Woodall and Alison Buckley are in need of inspiration. Anne-Marie Powell has been helping them to transform the old garden they've recently taken on. They've put in a boardwalk and a bog garden in the back of the house, but this week Alison wants to work at the front. She and Mike have bought a selection of colourful bedding plants, and they want Anne-Marie's help with the layout. Right, so these are the bedding plants that we've actually got to plant in Ooh, the front today. Great, aren't they? I think some of these colours are fantastic. I mean, look at that. That really nice, deep, velvety, bluey purple and that hot pink. Yostiospermin and petunias. Where are you going to put them exactly? Um, we're going to put them in the middle here. That's as far as we've got, really. Um, yeah. Take these tiles out. They're roofing tiles, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. And, oh, I've got some seeds as well. Oh, have you? Yeah, I forgot about them. Oh, wow, well, they're brilliant, aren't they? Yeah, they're Red great, aren't sunflowers. They? They're really nice. Well, to be honest with you, I just bought them for myself. I didn't know whether I was going to put them in here. I might have put them in parts, but I just fell in love with them, so that's why I bought them. You've got some good colour combinations, haven't you? I mean, it's all bedding, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, this African daisy, we use it as bedding over here because although it's a herbaceous perennial, it tends to die off over the winter. I'm not sure about the whites. I think it's a bit too mm. attention-seeking. Oh, oh my gosh, know, I we think quite it, like the white, don't we? It makes the others stand out It's more. a contrast, isn't it? Well, we'll sort it out anyway. Anyway, it's our garden. We're having it, aren't we, love? <laughs> <laughs> We're putting the old plants on one side and removing the tiles so that then we can prepare the ground for the next stage. While Mike digs in some compost to improve the soil's texture, I'm adding my favourite fertiliser, fish blood and bone meal. Our new plants should be well happy. So if you stick those kind of towards the middle. OK. We're sorting the plants into order of height. Alison's chosen four wow. colours, dark pink, purple, scarlet and white. The basis for a simple, modern, geometric design. Just kind of sprinkly it. So it's time to mark out these beds, isn't it? We'd have a strip of sunflowers going down there. Yeah. We're using a plastic bottle full of silver sand to mark out the design. It doesn't have to be perfect. No. It's big stripes of colour, bold colour, you know, with the sunflowers really tall in the middle, yeah. and going down to salvias and verbenas, then osteospermum, one colour here and one colour here. So if you grab the osteospermums, yep. I put these. Before we start planting, it's always a good idea to lay out the pots and trays where the plants are going to grow. Then we can all see if everything's in the right place. If you plant the lobelia down there and if you plant the lobelia up here, just space them out evenly and just put them so they knit together and make a big stripe. Is that OK? Yeah? Yeah. This lobelia is a pink non-trailing variety which will grow into soft, billowing mounds. These nasturtium seeds are really easy to grow and growing your own annuals will also save you money. Okay. It's important not to start bedding plants too early in the year just in case of late frost. Late May is the ideal time. Most, like ours, are annuals. So next year, Mike and Alison can choose a completely different colour scheme. I know the path needs a little bit of work on it, but... <laughs> What a what massive what improvement. A difference, yeah. What a difference, yeah. I'll tell you what, though, that white makes it, don't you think? That white, I think that white's fantastic. <laughs> makes the others stand out so much, <laughs> doesn't it? As long as you're happy, that's what I'm oh, here for. Fab. The front garden is now ready for summer, but we still need some new ideas to brighten up the top area of the back garden behind the house, and I think I know where we'll find them. This middle bit's a bit lacking, isn't it? Mm, we need some ideas, mess. don't we? Have you got any? Not really ideas, we just want some lawn. And we want to get rid of the straight edges. Well, you'll get loads of good ideas at Chelsea. That's the great thing about it. Yeah, they get scrubbed up. Yeah, it's a bit, po bit posh down it's there. Rather posh. <laughs> Let's get on with it. So we're getting the shower? <laughs> Not together. <laughs> Why?
Liz Colonnett lives in a beautiful old house overlooking Vale Pond in Guernsey. She and her husband Rod are lucky enough to garden in a mild climate. Liz is currently having a terrace built and she'll be looking for the right plants at Chelsea to give that terrace a Mediterranean look. So you've been working on this area. What have you been... Oh, God, just for a moment I didn't notice, but look at those walking great piers you built. I'm pleased you, you haven't noticed them particularly because it means they fit in well, doesn't it? They're very substantial, Liz. Well, it's a solid building going to be on top of that. We've got a pantiled roof going here, for example, and then just the struts across, the beams to carry the shade-loving plants. Okay. I mean, shade-giving plants, yeah, I mean. Yeah, because this is, this is a yeah. sun trap, isn't it? Really So hot. what plants are you going to put in here? Not totally decided, but I have got a few to start with. Come uh -huh. and have a look and see what I've bought. Well, rosemary is the archetypal Mediterranean yep. plant, isn't it? Yes, should be good. So that's fine. And the formium likes the sun as well. Yeah, I mean, that comes from New Zealand, so it'll be fine, but it's particularly good at taking exposed sites. Well, that's great for our winds in the winter. It maybe. looks good in a pot, too, as, yes. as an architectural plant. Yeah, good colour, good shape. OK, fine. So do you want to put these in these two pots? Yes, let's get going and do that, shall we? I've got okay. ordinary garden soil for the rosemary. I found that the one weak point of rosemary is if it gets wet and cold in the winter. Yeah, it can take cold, it can take some wet, but it can't bear standing in cold wet. No. Well, we, that doesn't happen here. No, well, I guess so it doesn't. So we're all right. Got to put some soil in. Yeah, no, no, I'm just saying, oh, we've got lots of room in there. How about that? Yeah. Or do you want to sit a bit higher? A bit higher, I okay. think. There we go. Yeah, that's about it, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. I know, obviously, water that in. I mean, that's all you have to do for rosemary. Get these from a local I did, garden centre. Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, there's something odd here. Look, Look at that. that, Liz. Isn't that extraordinary? It's been repotted. The roots have hardly grown through at all, except on one side. Just this one, look. Which has grown down here and created all this root. But this should be okay, shouldn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, feed it and look yeah. after it. Keep and, an eye and, on it. Yeah. OK, you put some crocs in there, cos that'll need some drainage. OK. How do you make up your potting compost? That's ordinary vegetable compost that I make from the kitchen and garden, and I've incorporated some seaweed and horse manure. It's yeah. very nice stuff. It's, it's very sandy, which stops it being too rich. Well, I guess that's from the seaweed, you see, cos when yeah. you gather the seaweed off the shore, you're bound to get a bit of sand in it. Cos there would be a risk doing it just in compost. It'd be a bit rich, yes. and then it wouldn't drain properly. No. I like this tool. What's this? That's a Guernsey planter. It's very good. No garden should be without one of them. How did you bend the handle? <laughs> Extra strength one morning. <laughs> right, shall we try that? I'll fit in there. That's about the right height, actually. That will look good. I think it will. Water it in. And that's your Mediterranean collection started. Pretty good. All the way from New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Liz wants to improve the view from her terrace by removing a brambly mound. So she splashed out £100 on hiring a mechanical digger. The man driving it comes to nothing. While Liz and Rod clear away all the brambles, I'm digging out the rubble and levelling the earth that has piled up since an extension was built on the back of the house 20 years ago. That's probably as far as I can take it without making any more mess. It looks pretty good. Huge area, but wonderful view. OK, it needs more tidying up, but yeah. then what? I'm going to think about it. Come to Chelsea and we'll look for plants. I mean, I'll that's where you'll ideas. get the inspiration. Exactly. Yeah. What a good idea. And also, I need some plants for my Mediterranean terrace as well. We could have put you, Chelsea for that. Yeah. Succulents. Yeah. Be wonderful. <laughs> Right, so now we know where our real gardeners are coming from, we're going to go round the show with them to see what captures their imagination. And believe you me, there's plenty here. This is one of the most exciting shows I've ever been to. Oh, look at that. See, now that is what I want. If your garden was like this all over, <laughs> you'd need about 50 gardeners, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Stand up here, hands behind your back. Identical. <laughs> Welcome back. So, this is Chelsea, the classiest show in the whole horticultural calendar. The whole place has had something of a facelift this year with the old marquee replaced by two very smart pavilions. And the designers and the exhibitors have responded with some of the most dazzling displays that I've ever seen. 
Now, I'm off to find Liz Colonnette while Adrian and Debbie catch up with Carol Klein. This is exquisite. It's wonderful, isn't it? Oh, this, this is, is the Princess Trust Garden. Oh, what do you yeah. think of this dribbling time? I love lawn? it. I, think so I want to do it. I've got to do it. It's I mean, very relaxing, isn't it? It is. It's lovely. You, you feel like it's a sort of oasis of calm, I think. Yeah. Really simple planting and lots of use of geraniums, you know, underneath all these We've actually, shrubs. when you think about it, we've actually got quite a few of these plants already, haven't we? Yeah, you have, yeah. But what about this? Brilliant, yeah. It's a definite brilliant. wow factor. Yeah, you could have one of these, couldn't oh. you? Well, I love the sound of water. It's something, you know, you can feel something happening. Yeah. It's an active garden, isn't well, it? Well, you're very lucky, aren't you? Because you've already got running water mm. yeah. in your garden. Yeah. I really think that we could do something with that sort of thing on our patio. We've only got two plants in each of those, but it really works. It does. Just keep it really simple planting. Yeah. The other thing that reminded me of your garden was this decking, too. It really makes you want to wander, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And it makes you want to sit down, too. Yeah. Really enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely. I'm taking Liz Colonnette to one of my favourite show gardens. Now, what do you think of this garden by Arabella lennox Boyd? I think it's absolutely incredible. It's so elegant and so clean in design. I love it. But I bet you can't grow an olive tree. Oh, yes. We could really? grow an olive. So you could actually have olives like this in your Mediterranean bit? I could, in a tub, which I might right. have to take in in the winter just for a day or two. Would you use a metallic tub like that? No, I don't like this cold colour for my garden. What about this planting underneath there? I could certainly do that, but I'd use a local daisy called um, St Peterport Daisy uh -huh. with more pink in it, which I think would look great with this silver leaf. And how do you feel about the contrast? And she's got these silvers and she's got these grey stone and the bark and all mm. And then it contrasts and mm. there's something incredible. Oh, yeah. That orange of the poppy and the intensity of, of that sort of chocolatey brown of the iris. And you've got the wonderful alliums and uh, this intense colour. Do you like the way she's contrasted those? I think it's too new a concept for me to sort of take in quickly. I'd have to think about it. Guernsey couldn't handle it. Well, I don't know. In time. <laughs> you never know. What about that for a lawn? Oh, God. Well, you could have cleaned the bath out. <laughs> Perhaps Claire Whitehouse's modern design will be more to Mike and Alison's taste. Now this is quite contemporary, isn't it? This is gorgeous. I like the planting. There's enough colours to make it interesting, but it's not too bright. That's right, it's quite sophisticated, isn't it? Yeah. And you've got lots of rhythm and texture and interjections of subtle colour. Subtle colours. It's going to be different from your front garden, isn't it? Very different, <laughs> yeah. Just a bit, yeah. I like, I like the way the garden's quite fresh. It's quite bright, you know, even on a rainy day. Gosh, and the lawn. Why do you like that so much? Well, it's, it's like a lawn, isn't it, but with something breaking it up in the middle. I mean, I don't know how we tackle it in our garden, but I'd certainly like something like that. Well, this is fantastic, isn't it, because it's split up and you've got lots of different structural areas within the whole whole thing, really, haven't you? So, Too many yeah. straight lines for me. Well, there's no, no reason this, why you can't yeah, curve them round. Oh, these beautiful. stones. Look at these stones. The glass, it's gorgeous. Mm. I love this idea. That is so stunning. Now we're off to the marquees for the floral displays. There are brilliant stands to suit all tastes, so the displays often provoke strong reactions. People either love them or loathe them. Now, this is a massive group of plants that will do quite well in your shady areas in your garden. I mean, up near the house, it's really quite dark, isn't it? Yeah. Do you like them? No, they're awful. <laughs> Why do you think that? <laughs> I mean, they'd look nice in my grand's garden, but they will certainly won't look nice in mine. I thought you'd like them because they're so colourful, aren't they? And with shade, there's not an awful lot that you can grow that's that bright, to be honest. I quite like them. No, I mean, that one's quite nice one, that one up there. Yeah, Celia Smedley. But yeah. well, other than that, no, they're not going in my garden, I'm sorry. <laughs> Such a contradiction. <laughs> One's bright, but doesn't want bright. <laughs> now, this is Brian Hiley's stand, and mm -hmm. I thought there might be things that you liked here. 
I do, actually. I immediately love some of them. I like this one, Echeveria. That's dramatic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And soft and beautiful. Very, very beautiful plant. And I like this one for the shape as well. I like the spirals. And I quite like the zany bit that goes up here. That, that's, mm, that appeals to me. OK. All uh, right? Yeah, I not really? Not really for me, but it doesn't matter. And it would look good close to this one. Yeah. And that's a wonderful foil, really, for other it things, is. isn't it? Would you grow that in a pot or would you plant it out? A lower pot, I'd right. put that in, right. with my combination of planting, I think. Well, what about the grasses? I love the festuca. Well, you know, grasses are new to me and I'm having to get used to them. I can see that I would like that in time to come, but okay. not quite at the moment. Anything else? And I love this, because this would look really good with my cool greys and things. It's a bit it's ordinary. sort of raspberry ripple for me, but I like the leaves. They're I interesting. like raspberry ripple. Well, there we are. Now, the thing to do at this point in Chelsea is to get out your notebook and pencil, which, of course, you brought with you. Of course I did, And yes. write it down, because you'll forget. I will. I'm going to get my notepad out now. Of course, Chelsea is not only about plants. There are stands full of everything, from garden tools to garden sculpture. Adrian and Debbie are still searching for something sensational for their patio. Look at this. Super. Isn't it just beautiful? Don't That's you want great. to touch it? Really, really nice, yeah. And quite a sort of irony, you know, the water and the and the drought of the cactus. And what about him? He's lovely. I'm not sure my mother would approve though. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up here, hands behind your butt. Identical. Yeah, you yeah, can't tell a difference yeah. at all. <laughs> and isn't this just beautiful? I think that's absolutely fantastic. It's so organic. And you know what it is? No. It's a kissing seat. Oh, Come on, then, Dad, just really yeah. go. Oh. And I'm piggy in the middle again. Mm. Oh. <laughs> now, all our real gardeners have had a good look round the show and they've formed their own impressions. So what do they feel they've got out of it? One particular garden that's really captured my imagination. There's um, a cottage with a, a winding garden down to a man-made beach and a boardwalk and, and a decking. It's fantastic. But the effort that's gone into it has given me loads of ideas and I never, ever thought I could get excited about plants, but being here today, it's made my pulse race. I've actually seen a water feature today. Now, I came here for inspiration and it's certainly given me that. I've just got to have it. It's just delicate petals. It's just the way the water falls. It's just not your average water feature, and I'm going to go home with the idea of getting one. I've loved the sheer elegance of some of the stands. They've been a real eye-opener, a real delight. And I was really surprised by the range of world plants, from the carnivorous pitcher plants of the tropics to the succulents of the desert and everything in between. It's been wonderful. It's been really nice just wandering around and talking and, and discussing things and saying maybe we could have that in our house and so that's just saying no, we can't, Adrian's you know. always got the most expensive taste, that's the problem. No, that's what you have. <laughs> I think what we realise is we've got so many plants in our garden that we could use more effectively. You know, we see plants here and say, wow, doesn't that look great? Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and one of us points out, well, we've got that, but it's in the wrong place, so we're desperate to go back and... Um, and get started. Start we've the gardening. We've got a lot to do. <laughs> Well, that's it from Real Gardens at Chelsea Flower Show, and we shan't be back for two weeks. But I'll see you then. Bye-bye.